This is Israeli Technology Founders Speak, a podcast of conversations with successful Israeli high-tech and biotech entrepreneurs, with your host, Avraham Hermon. Tomer Shore is the CEO and co-founder of Toonfork, an Israeli startup that created audio personalization software that customizes sound from your computer or devices to match your optimal hearing and give you the best listening experience based on your personal profile. Avraham sat down with Tomer in the offices of J.M.B. Davis Ben David in Jerusalem to discuss how he took an idea and turned it into a product, raised over $2 million, including winning awards and grants, advice for coming up with a successful startup idea, understanding your market, when to raise money and when not to, and sage advice for startup founders. This podcast is a creation of J.M.B. Davis Ben David, an intellectual property law firm serving clients around the world. You have great innovations. We keep them safe. It's not enough to just have a great startup idea or innovation. If you don't legally protect your innovations, products, and brand, anyone can claim them as their own. We keep your great innovation secure. Learn more by going to jmbdavis.com. That's jmbdavis.com. Okay, thanks, Tomer, for coming into our office here in Jerusalem. Happy I wanted to, to know, here. what problem does Tunefork solve? My personal story began with my father. My father injured due to his military service and his hearing damaged uh, badly. When I grew up, I saw him struggling mostly when he tried to use smart devices or audio services, like listening to music, watching videos and movies, um, listening to G- GPS instructions in the car. Um, he got a really hard time trying to use this kind of devices and services. And when I dived into the world of audio and hearing and sound, one of the first things I found out is that hearing is an individual experience. Each of us has a unique ear print, just like fingerprint, but most audio services and smart devices aren't adjusted to our needs. It means that each of us is missing something with our audio experience, but for people with hearing loss and seniors, for them it's a great challenge whenever they're trying to use smartphones, tablets, laptops, or, you know, even using Spotify, Netflix, any kind of service that relates uh, to audio. So these audio producers, uh, companies, they're thinking about their average user and they're adapting their sound to how the average user will react to it, right? And what you're trying to do is saying, we're going to personalize it and we're going to make a listening experience personal based on the capabilities and the desires of the individual. Exactly. So currently, the only thing you can do with audio is volume. You can amplify and you can reduce the volume. But audio is much more complex than this specific option. So by personalizing audio, you allow people with hearing loss and seniors to be able to listen to certain things, but you're also improving and optimizing the experience for all. Uh, So basically, this is the vision of TuneFord, to deliver the future of audio, to give you more abilities to control your audio and get a better experience. That sounds like a great goal and sounds like it could help people like your father. And how did you take this idea that you had that was inspired by your father, by your interactions with your family, how did you change it into a reality from the idea stage? So the, before I founded a company, I served in 8200, the elite technology unit of the Israeli Defense Forces. So I got some experience with technology and development, and I figured out that I want to use technology to solve this kind of problem. And the first thing I, I did is just to approach anyone I could get from the audio and audiology uh, field to learn about this field, to learn about the current solutions and to find the technologies, the most advanced technologies in the field um, and trying to understand whether there is a place for innovation for technology. I found um, people that got very excited about technology and about the opportunity to disrupt this market of audio and audiology. And then I found a partner um, also from uh, 8200 that's familiar with this problem uh, Yoav Blau, my co-founder, my partner in the company, and um, his wife also uh, experienced uh, hearing loss. So together we figured out that we need to sit down and try playing with the technology and see whether we can come out with something that will help these people. So what stage are you at now? What what sort of product do you have and who is it available to? 
So currently our product is a standalone app that is for free on the Google Play Store and we're also selling it as an add-on for smartphones and tablets, uh, mostly in the US. We're already selling the product uh, for about a year. Uh, now people in the US using it pretty much all the time. We pivoted towards the last few months, in the last few months towards um, streaming services. We are more focused on music streaming and video streaming, targeting companies that already have music apps and video apps, uh, working with them to integrate our technology into their apps. And in the next few months, I hope you'll see TuneFork as part of some of the popular uh, music streaming apps. So uh, you're talking about a pivot from a sort of a focus on selling your product to a customer to selling it to a business, right? Right. Can you talk a little bit about that? You know, I understand if you're addressing a customer, he could find your app and, and find that it's unique and it's special and, and use it and it may be easy to work with. But what about a business? What's preventing a business like, let's say, Apple or Amazon, if you uh, introduce them to your technology, what's preventing them from just adopting it without you? Why do they need you? So I'll start with, with um, telling you a bit about this pivot. I started like right after I finished my service in the unit. Um, so I was pretty young and I had zero experience with business, business development and sales. I had experience in um, product management, uh, project management uh, as a data analyst, um, but I didn't have any experience in business. So I started by figuring it out by myself and getting advices from experts in the field, how to build the company. And just after working inside and speaking with companies, we understood that working with the streaming services has a bigger potential. And this is the way that we're going to uh, go. But even before that, we understood that the huge players in the industry of smart devices and audio, like Apple, like Google, that threat for any kind of small startup. Mm -hmm. So you need to find a sweet spot where your technology is interesting enough so they will want to engage so you can raise money. But it's not the most interesting thing that Apple will develop uh, like next month. So it's like kind of sweet spot that you can plan to get into, but you also need some kind of luck and understanding of the market. And um, so I think we are in this kind of sweet spot. And that's the fifth, fifth thing that is important. After you understand that you are in this kind of sweet spot, you need to protect your technology with patents. You need to develop know-how in the company getting this kind of experience in development and to protect your technology. And it's very important to know all the time what the big companies are working on. They're publishing articles and, and publications all the time. So to, to follow them and make sure that you have your unique points and they won't be able to steal or develop by themselves. Okay, great. So you addressed intellectual property and patents as one of the methods that you use for essentially making your product unique and preventing others from copying it and from doing exactly what you're doing. Right. What was your biggest challenge in developing the product and producing this uh, TuneFork product? So I think there are a lot of challenges in the field of audiology and bringing it into the entertainment world to use clinical standards um, like hearing tests and other things that we are doing to bring it into the world of music and entertainment and apps. But there's a lot of like development specific challenges for TuneFork. I think the biggest challenge when starting a startup is to find a product market fit, to mm -hmm. understand that you have something in hand that is interesting for the end user, for potential partners. Like when we're addressing currently streaming services, we need to understand what are their needs and explain to them that our product will solve some of their problems, will grow their company or their services. And that's like a huge challenge. I think it's the number one challenge for startups. And this is the thing that we faced in the last few years and also facing today. So how can you convince a company that has a product that they need you? So we're trying to figure out what are their challenges. Like small companies um, in the streaming uh, field competing with Spotify, they need to differentiate themselves. Right. Basically in music, most services has uh, the same content. Like they have 70 million songs. Uh -huh. You won't listen to half of it in your life. So, so content is not a problem in terms of music. So they need to bring innovation or, or added value to the user from a different angle. So we're presenting them with the future of audio. So if someone is using Spotify, they're getting certain experience. If we are working with a smaller competitor and offering with them to the end user advanced technology, they might be able to get new users, more users to use their services. That sounds like a great strategy. It sounds like there's a lot of potential there. 
mm-hmm. in uh, helping certain companies that adapt your technology to provide a better product. Yep. So let me ask you um, a little bit about fundraising. Mm-hmm. So you have experience with your startup. What sort of challenges have you had? Maybe talk talk to me a little bit about fundraising and uh, how how you see it and what you recommend for startups that are in this stage. So to date, we raised over $2 million um, from private investors, from VCs, from grants, both in Israel and abroad. And so we have some experience. And I think the number one challenge is to understand uh, when and why to raise money. When I started and I didn't know anything about startups, I thought that fundraising is the most important thing and it's a goal for startups, but it's actually not so true. Fundraising and money is the fuel for startup. It's not a goal by itself. So right. as long as you can run without money, as long as you can sit in your house and develop something and do the research and understand whether you have something in hand, I think it's a much uh, better option. And it's very important. You're learning how to be a lean, how to work by yourself. And just when you need money and you really understand why uh, you need it and how you're going to use it, that's the right point to raise money. Uh, I think we were fortunate enough to not be able to raise money too soon. Mm-hmm. Um, but when we needed, we were able to approach first private investors, uh, first like grants from the Israeli Innovation Authority mm-hmm. and then private investors and eventually VCs. So how long were you in the stage before you raised money? So when I started, I was still um, serving in the uh, IDF and uh, my co-founder, he was in the university. Mm-hmm. So we did it part time. Mm-hmm. And so we had like a year or even a year and a half um, before we actually raised money. We worked a lot on the product sitting in the garage, like developing stuff. But we got a lot and we developed um, like POCs and, and MVPs without raising any money, just by ourselves, finding partners to work with, but not paying them, like giving them options or something mm-hmm. else. Uh, and we did a great job uh, without raising money, like even before we raised money. Wow. Talk to me a little bit about the Israel Innovation Authority. I'm familiar with some of the grants that they that they have, some of the possibilities. What sort of uh, options did you find useful for TuneFork? So the first grant that we got was TNUFA. Mm-hmm. is the first grant for entrepreneurs with ideas uh, that want to make a product so they can get up to, I think, 200,000 shekels. Mm-hmm. And not for salaries, just for development, like for buying uh, things that you need, uh, materials and other stuff. IP also is included in that, right? Yeah, I think so. I think yeah. we started to write our patent uh, with uh, the grant from the mm-hmm. Israeli Innovation Authority. And it's very helpful because you taking most of the risk at this stage that you are not even sure that you have something in hand and the Israeli Innovation Authority helping you uh, to figure it out. Mm-hmm. After this... Um, that's, a, that's a matching grant, the Tanufa grant, right? Right. Yep. So, so you have to bring in 15% mm-hmm. and then they yeah. match that with 85? Right. Mm-hmm. So we've bought it from home and from partners. It's, it's not a huge amount of money. Like right. if you're getting 200,000 shekels, so you need to bring 30,000. It's not a small amount, um, right. but, but if you're serious and you're interested, so you can find. Other grants that we looked at are bigger grants for uh, more mature companies. And we didn't get other grants that we, we applied for, but currently we are looking at other grants um, that are helpful. Uh, the Israeli Innovation Authority is a great concept to help companies to grow and mitigate the risk at this stage and when you're successful you are contributing back to the country so it's great so uh who else is involved in investing in your company if you can disclose of course the lead vc that led the aware uh, last round is tri ventures and they founded a seed stage fund called tri venture arc and they're co-working with shiba medical center mm-hmm. and there we conducted our clinical trial and we have great connection with them. They led the previous round and they also uh, will join uh, the current round. Uh, We're currently raising another round, welcoming both private investors and VCs, and they're also going to join. You said you mentioned Shiva Medical Center, which is one of the biggest medical centers here in Israel. Mm -hmm. You're a startup that's in the entertainment field and at the same time have a collaboration with the hospital. So that seems to be pretty unique. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. So actually, our unique point in the field of audio personalization is to bring the clinical grade, the clinical accuracy from the medical world to the entertainment world. So we are conducting clinical trials. We are working with medical equipment and we're bringing a very high standard of hearing tests and personalization to a world that currently doesn't have this kind of standards, the the audio world. And so that's our 
biggest differentiator and unique point that we're using the facilities of Shiba and other hearing clinics like Gal Hearing, um, our first part- partner in the company, using their knowledge, their expertise in their uh, medical devices uh, to bring high standards to our uh, field. What sort of funding advice do you have for startup founders? You have your own personal story about how you started, you know, a little bit of bootstrapping, a grant, a small grant from the Israel Innovation Authority, and then uh, VC seed capital. So what sort of advice would you give to someone who's just starting out? So I think it's helpful to understand from the beginning, what is your goal? Because we are reading about exits and IPOs in the newspaper. That's not the common story of startups. Most startups are failing and closing. Some other startups are doing small exits that are great, but it's not like a huge success story. And when you're understanding what is your goal, so it's easier to navigate the ship towards it. We are interested in building a startup. We believe in our concept that we can be a huge company. So we need VC money to build a company. But other startups uh, might be able to do it with bootstrapping or or just angel private uh, investors uh, money that is easier to manage and and as i said don't raise money if you don't have to raise money when you know why you need it and what you're going to do with it and that's like i think the best advice when you're founding a startup understand what are your goals and navigate the ship towards them let's switch gears a little bit and back to your uh, your product so your business to customer type product I want to talk to you about how you market that product. What sort of challenges do you have marketing that product? It seems that there's a lot of potential people that at least I know that have hearing impairments or are elderly and would like to improve their hearing experience in using technology. How do you get to those people? Actually, the biggest challenge with people with hearing loss and seniors that they don't want to admit they have a problem. Like most people with hearing loss don't even use hearing aids, even, even if they need them. Less than 25% of people that can benefit from hearing aids actually using them. So that's like the number one challenge for hearing aids companies and everyone in the audiology field. So we're trying to suggest our solution, not as an aid for people with disability, but for as an optimizer, as get a better experience. We're going to improve your life. We are not going to compensate from some disability. And we see it working better because we're getting both people with hearing loss and seniors that searching for a solution but don't want to admit they have a problem. But we're also getting to a new audience like musicians or audiophiles or people who just want a better experience. So this kind of marketing strategy working both for our first adopters, people that must have this kind of uh, technology, but also for other audiences. So Tomer, let me ask you, what have you learned about being a founder that you wish you would have known earlier? If someone would have, would have t- taken you back in time and say, you're going to be a fi- founder, this is what you need to know. So what experience would, or knowledge would you give yourself from your own experience? Actually, I, I'm, I'm speaking with a lot of uh, new founders and that coming for advice. Not that they're such a big expert, but they have some experience. And the first thing I'm telling to everyone, and I know it's not a popular advice, but don't do it. Uh-huh. It's a crazy roller coaster. It will... Take your life upside down. Don't do it. It's, it's, it's a dream, but it's also a nightmare. And after I'm saying this advice, I'm saying if you still want to do it, so do it. But you have to know what are the risks. Um, you have to be prepared to take your life into this adventure. And I wish someone would have told me this like five years ago. I'm sure I would do the same thing, but I wanted to know what I'm getting into. So this is like, I think... A bit of a weird advice, but the advice that I'm giving to any new founder getting into the field. So that sounds kind of accurate because you're not the first person on this podcast to tell me that. <laughs> that uh, you know, some said it jokingly more than others, but uh, people have said it's not an easy thing. And I think that if a founder understands what's ahead and what sort of obstacles he's going to have, that's going to make his life a lot easier actually dealing with them if he can prepare for them in advance and prepare himself for how difficult it may be going forward. Yeah, at least mentally, you will be more prepared. So, so Tomer, this process of uh, starting the startup, moving forward has been, sounds like a great experience for you, but also a learning experience. What have you learned from the, the process of requesting grants and uh, trying to get funding that you'd like to share with potential uh, founders? Yeah, so when you're applying for grants or applying for competitions and exhibitions, 
Some of them are asking a lot of questions, hard questions about your company and about yourself. And I think it's important um, to sit down and answer these kind of questions. When you're having a hard time to write down your business model or even, you know, about um, the added value that you're bringing to your customers, you need to ask yourself, how, how am I doing it? How I'm optimizing the business model, what exactly I want to give to my customers, what I'm bringing with this technology, with this innovation to the world. So it's a long process. It's very hard. And sometimes people say, I don't really think I need this grant. Why do I need to go through all of these questions? Or you're applying for a competition. I did a lot of competitions in Israel and abroad. We won some, we won money, and we won PR packages. And sometimes when you're starting, you say the chance of getting to the final of the competition or getting the grant is so uh, low. What am I getting out of it? So you're getting this kind of experience and knowledge about your own company when you're trying to answer these kind of questions. It's very important. It's very hard, but I think it's very helpful. Okay, that's a really important piece of advice. Tilmer, it's been really interesting learning about your company and uh, learning about the challenges you've been through as well as the successes that you've had. So thanks a lot for coming here to our offices in Jerusalem, and I hope we get to meet again soon in the future. Thank you. It was a great pleasure. That was Tomer Shore the CEO of TuneFork. We hope you enjoyed this episode. There are many more to come. Do you have a great innovation or startup idea? We'd love to hear from you. You can reach out to us by going to our website, jmbdavis.com. And if you go to jmbdavis.com forward slash startup, you'll see we have a special site specifically made for startups to help startups protect their innovations. Please be in touch with us and find out how we can help you. Thank you for listening, and we look forward to bringing you the next episode.